reading 41 from the Hogmall. Friends shall gladden each other with arms and garments as each for themselves can see. Gift givers' friendships are the longest found if fair their fates ever may be. Now, please, I ask you to gaze into the candle and feel its presence. This is the time to go way back. Back to a time that had no lights inside. To a time when the dark time of the year was not something marked as a note on a calendar, but was something experienced in the moments of the everyday. The something they could not escape with the technology we are privileged to experience. For those of our Northern Hemisphere histories, the sun came up later and went down sooner. The night brought cold and brought the unknowns. This is the unknowns remembered in our bodies as children, which often leads to the fear of the dark. This is, a some, this is sometimes a concern shared in the far past. While many adapted to working and being in the dark, it was because they had no other choice. Again, please return to our candle and breathe deep or in whatever way brings you to the calm center of you. Feel the idea that that is the only light in all creation in this moment. This is a time many of our ancestors knew as Yule or Yawu in the older Scandinavian languages. This was the time that darkness folds deeper to hold its zenith. That is undisputed, that is powerful, and that is important. For without the darkness, the light does not matter. And without the light, the darkness becomes nothing. That is the balance found in the oldest stories. So during this, the darkest time of the year in the Northern Hemisphere, and the lightest time of the year in the Southern Hemisphere, we pause and we look to the light and our, we are reminded that the wheel of the year rolls ever forward, that we are interconnected and that we are asked to celebrate the sacred circle of life and to live in harmony with the rhythms of nature. And I say, amen, skull, and peace for us all. The Havmal is a collection of wisdoms from the Norse tradition. Like many old texts handed down, we face considerable concern when reading it or studying it. We are often missing vital contextual understanding of the times and places that birth the words in this collection. We also face the overwhelming troubles of later translator, Christian gender and other biases. That being said, this is still a wonderful collection to adapt to our modern context, if you are so called and willing to do the work. So I'm going to read again from Hall of Mall saying 41, as, tra as translated by Henry Adams Bellows in 1936. Friends shall gladden each other with arms and garments, as each for themselves can see. Gift givers' friendships are the longest found and fair their fates may ever be. This saying is speaking of community and in times which the community would gather and share with each other. This was a big part of the fun ritual of sharing Yawu. In particular, it was a big part of the Sumble of Plenty, which was the three nights and days around the winter solstice before, during, and after. So today would be the first day. And it was spoken fondly of so many sagas and was a party shared as a way to celebrate that through the, that though the world was dark in the Northern hemisphere, that the light would come again. They understood the cycles in a more visceral and connected way than we do now. So it's an excellent reminder of it. This was a time for making oaths, boasts and toasts as part of sharing community and keeping the light. Those who had extra meats, dry foods, storage, or fabric were called to share within the community with those who might face shortages. This was so that the whole community would live another year stronger. 
This was a paramount part of how the Norse lived into the relationships they had with each other and with their gods. The giving and sharing was seen as a way to make their fates fair, as spoken of in that Hogmall saying. I would like to think that we do this work. I know many UU churches around the world offer up food banks and food pantries for all of us to use, not just their members. I love this. This is the way we work to ensure all people have what they need because we are understanding the connections. We, we have to live into the world interconnected. I also think this is in part doing a small piece of the giant pie that is understanding the inherent worth and dignity of every person, even if it's just a small part, but it's still important. Anyway, I digress. These traditional three nights had so much joy and even had a literal law for a minimum amount of honey-based alcohol for each adult to be consumed over the three days. I wish I was kidding, but we actually have this from paperwork dated around the year 950 in Norway. So this was a real thing. This was a time when the good things in life, both in the community at this symbol of plenty and in their individual religious practices, when they prayed, when they lit their own home hearths, all of those things were tied together as a way to specifically invite in joy, to invite in the wholeness. And it was a specific time that was set aside for joy to flow. That was a dedicated purpose of Yawu. These people who knew they needed each other and they knew that this was their chance to express that as well. For our modern times, I think about how this time of year has turned into a commercial idea. And I wondered how we as a community might bring in more of the feelings of joy of the Norse tradition. How might we bring in the light? We at CLF are so lucky that we work hard on our relationships as part of covenants with each other. We speak openly of it. There's no shame in it. And I feel like the old Norse people would not only understand that about us, but they would respect it. I think they would take it so seriously how we commit to each other. And I mentioned earlier that Yawul community members would offer up oaths this time of year, oaths. And these oaths at Yawul were called ironbound oaths, as in unbreakable. The oaths sworn at this time of year were extra special and considered to be most sacred to a Norse covenant to both community and to their gods. They were oaths often reflected on for a period of many years before being sworn at such a time in front of your community of accountability. Think about that. This was their community, not only of love, but their community in equal parts of accountability the group they lived with, the group they died with, the group they grew with, that group called them to be better while simultaneously loving them. And I think about these oaths and I have to consider while I think about an ironbound oath, the principles and sources of Unitarian Universalism. In particular, I look at the eighth principle and I ask, I see how it's asking us to help each other grow. And I feel like that just like zings is an ironbound oath, just zings. And I'm called to speak to the idea that we in a community are required to help each other. We are in covenant so much, we must act upon these principles and sources. This is one of the greatest things I think we can learn from this North tradition. One of the greatest things. What would the UU world look like if all of us embrace the principles and the traditions in our day-to-day -day choices? Both the small choices of paper, plastic, or bring your own bag, to the big choices of buying a house with extra insulation, to maybe, I don't know, thinking a little harder about the things that make you uncomfortable. That's an invitation. I also feel the reflection requires a moment to remember we each have times we, we still have to invite joy. Moments that we ask us to remember that community should be about love also in our relationships with each other. And this for me is the respectful light of Yule, the gift of these very few short days, a time to own the idea that friends shall gladden each other, 
That's that first line of the saying from the Havmo. So important, so vital in our real lived experience of today. So I'm going to close with all the love of community and the warmth of light of Yul, Yaul, or anything else that you celebrate in this time of joy. I wish, I wish for you the warmth of Yaul if you're in the northern hemisphere or the cool breezes if you're in the southern hemisphere. May the light of Yul and all other holy days of this time be with you. And I say, Amen, Ashe, Bishere, and as the Norse would say, Skull, and peace be with us all. Thank you. <laughs>